Okay, Goldbridge saves football. This one has been on my head since last week. Most underrated player in the Premier League right now. I'm saying Mo Salah. So I think with this one, we're putting a stake in the ground and saying this player is the most underrated player in the Premier League. He's been disrespected far too long. Yeah. To do that, I think we need to go for the options, Mark. Got any? Well, what options you got? I'm going to start with Martin Odegaard. Yes, it's a good call. It's a good point. Thank you. That's why I'm pointing at you. People who are on audio, I'm pointing. Because it is a good point. I think Martin Odegaard is... Well, he's, well look, I mean, he was a, a, a teenage starlet. Yeah. Uh, went it's nice to see those players actually carry on, isn't it? Because yeah. prime example of that, Freddie Adu dropped off a cliff. That was the one I was going to say. Sorry, mate, I jumped in. We'll get this. There's plenty more. Yeah, Gab there Gravel is. Gravel Morrison. Uh, yeah, another good one. But I think with Odegaard, just to see him kick off. Even Wayne when he, Rooney, what did he do? Yeah, all right, we covered that off. When he came in at the first bit, it was like, uh, when, he, when he came in at Arsenal, it was very much like, yeah. hopefully he kicks on. And then obviously last season, it was just absolutely fantastic. And the fact that he's the captain as well. Yeah. Leadership. Um, and I don't think people would give him the credit for that. But no, I'm a massive fan of Odegaard. I, I quite like that one. Um, Other ones we've got uh, recently signed for Manchester City, Kovacic. Oh, I mean, look, I think basically on your Wikipedia page, if you're a Chelsea player of last year, just delete it. We'd all let it happen because there's so many good players at Chelsea who had bad years last year. And Kovacic was always the player at Chelsea. You know, when you go, you're watching a game, who would you sign for your club? Yeah. It was always that. And the fact that Pep's bought in, I mean, it's a pretty, pretty obvious he's a good player. And for a good, very good fee as well. And he's always been underrated. He was underrated before he went at Real Madrid. I felt he was a good player. And it, it, even with that, I think we would have said Ilkay Gundogan, but he's obviously just gone off the... Gund Gundogan. Gundogan. He's yeah. gone off the Barcelona, but he was sort of really in that category, wasn't he? And he was like, he would get to the last third of the season. He'd always have a, a third of a season where he was like, oh, yeah. I am prime. I've got another one, Thiago Silva. Wow. Under, underrated? Overrated. Underrated. Underrated. Yeah. I really? Think, I think I think he's, I think Thiago Silva's underrated. I think, it, well, he's, he's very much in this fine wine stage of his career now. No, isn't but it? like, that's what I mean. Uh, what is he? Must be 49. What, so you're saying he's underrated even for this stage of this no, career? I just, I just think, I think actually he's one of the players at Chelsea last season who I would have had him in contend of the player of the year in the Premier League. But because you're in a crap team, you don't get credit for it. He's, I, I mean, I never thought I, thought, I thought he was retiring at PSG and then he comes to Chelsea and, he, and he's been brilliant, absolutely brilliant in a very tough league. I think he's underrated as well. One that came out and stood out was obviously there's a lot of focus on top six teams, but one that we've both discussed privately is Wilfred Zaha. Yeah, yeah. That yeah. Man United move was awful. Mm. Lots of reasons why that ended. Um, Nothing back, to do with managers' relationships with their... their yeah, anyway. I think if you say allegedly, you can get... Allegedly, nothing. Um, Crystal Palace, there has been talk every summer that he's going to make a move to the top six. He's gone to Turkey now, I believe. Um... I would have liked to see him stay. Uh, there were links with it's PSG. It's a loss to the Premier League. Yeah, but do, uh, but do you think he could have gone back into that top six sort of? I think I think setup? I think I think that over the recent years there was times where I thought he might go a Chelsea or an Arsenal, and I think it would have been interesting to see him there. But I think he's almost in that Matt Letizia mould if you're old enough. Where what, what, uh, which way we go? Not the <laughs> not the controversial view. tweets. Okay, right. Not the controversial tweets. No, I mean, Matt Letizia was a player, if you're old enough, that at Southampton was actually a good footballer before he was a bad tweeter. And he, um, he, he you know, it was amazing that he stayed at Southampton. Some of the goals, he, he, was, he almost won goal of the season every year. And I think Zaha sort of got into that category of being a player that stayed at a, a lower club, with all due respect to Palace, that what could he have done at a bigger club? So, yeah, but he doesn't play in the Premier League anymore, so we're not including him. I think uh, we need to, just thinking aloud, we need to do a video of um, Premier League players that are playing now that could turn into the next Matt Letizia. Obviously, Ricky Lambert has just come out and said that you can talk nicely to water, so maybe we can do a top 10 around that. Yeah, who's going to go down that road? Yeah. Um, one I want to throw in the mix, this would come under the bracket of curveball. Um, very underrated and still chopping it up. Danny Welbeck. I would have that. Would you? I'd, I'd take Danny Welbeck at Manchester United. We need sort of that bench striker that can come in and do a job. And I think, look, if you're doing a job for Brighton, you're doing a job. Like, you know, at the end of the day, he's 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 he's, he's had a really good season for Brighton. Injuries. He was at Man United. I mean, he'll always be remembered as for Man United fans for running through one-on-one -on -one against Bayern Munich and trying to chip Manuel Neuer and actually just passing it back to him. But... Honest, hardworking player who I think if he hadn't had the injuries would have gone 
even better. But the fact that he's at Brighton, I mean, look, De Zerbi, not going to use a player like that unless he's got something about him. It's a good one. But no, look, my, my, my choice would be Mo Salah, as I said at the start. And the reason for this is because I don't know whether it's because he's not born in Brazil or France, but the reality is, I mean, his I would have him probably as Premier League top scorer this season without Haaland in it. Is that uh, with Kane in the league as well? I think he can push Kane considering Liverpool had a bad season last year. I mean, Kane is fantastic. But look, Kane Kane's a good point. Harry Kane gets the credit he deserves. I don't think Mo Salah does. And I don't know... I don't know why that is. I think it for me he's consistently been one of the best players in the Premier League, consistently been in the top five players in the world. And there is just something about Mo Salah and it happens with other players as well. I mean, look, I know Son had a bad year last year, but you could say the same about Son. Is it because he's not from a traditionally world beating? And look, if you're English, you're laughing, you'll get overhyped. But um, yeah, I, I just think Mo Salah, if he was Brazilian, they they talk about him in a different way. And I think that's, look, look, if he was Bulgarian, if he was Australian, it would be the same. I'm not saying it's because it's Egypt or uh, or, or any other country, but I just think that he is massively underrated. And, and I think when I'm saying that as a Man United fan, I don't want to give him any credit, but I think his consistency, his fitness, he doesn't get mentioned in the top five players in the world enough for me. Well, and you look back at the amount of times he scored over 30 goals, yeah, which now ridiculous. because we've got and he's Harland, a winger. Yeah, and because we've got Haaland in the league now, that maybe puts a downer on that as well. But the fact he's doing that, like to score that many goals, and some of these Liverpool teams have been great, but even last season he still got to that total. So I just think, and you look at the way he came in, obviously at his time at Chelsea, even at Roma, he did good, but not great. And then the trajectory he's been at Liverpool has just been absolutely phenomenal and still doing it and probably doing it for the next two to three seasons. Yeah, so there you go. Mo Salah, absolutely. Goldbridge saves football. I'm going to go Mo Salah. Hello, I'm Mark Goldbridge and my new podcast, Goldbridge Saves Football, is out now. Check it out in the video description. We're here to definitively solve all the problems of football. We'll be discussing bad pundits, bad opinions, the lot. Check it out on Spotify or whatever podcast you listen to. Links in the description. You've asked for it. It's out now.